Hello, this is old electronics fan, and this time we've got this little Motorola suitcase radio. Um, I wish I could say it was in really good shape. Uh, the person was asking a fair amount of money for it, um, and I talked them down a little bit before I came to look at it, and then when I actually saw it, I discovered something, well, a couple of some things. This is the speaker. It was inside there. I took it out. I want to see what I had. The voice coil is still good. And it doesn't rub. But, um, as you can see, um, it's going to take a little bit of work to make that work again. I may have another speaker I can use instead. I don't know. But the other problem, the big problem, was that um, there are no, no uh, tubes. So I had to go and get, I had to go and order new tubes, and fortunately, it was not an outrageous amount of money to get them. Um, this is, uh, let's swing this up a little bit there. This is a model 68L11, and this is another AC battery-operated set. Oh, that's the remains of my speaker. I'm going out of there. And that's interesting. This is a strap that snaps over against the hold, straps across to hold the battery in place. But what's really weird is there's a ground. Interesting. Well, anyway. So, but on the plus side, take this out in here, get this out of my way. Let's put you there for now. Okay, um, this is one of the antenna wires floating around here somewhere. Actually, I think um, the way it's set up is that one wire comes from here to the chassis and then another wire comes from the case and plugs in here, I believe. See that little guy there? So, what we're dealing with, and I, I chopped, I don't know if I chopped, I think I might have, uh, the cord in this was shot. I mean, it's just plain shot. Um, what's really nice, though, probably about the only thing that's good at this point, <coughs> is that the... Uh, tuning part of this is is uh, okay. Well, let's see what it is. It was working. Well, maybe it needs a little TLC. Okay. Yeah, it's going to need some work. You're going to have to clean it up, oil it up. The, um, there's a little bit of dirt and corrosion in here, but not too bad, actually. But what's nice is that this is all together, so, and I don't have, although I may have a uh, document somewhere that tells me about um, the, uh, the stringing of various radios. <clears throat> so I may have a stringing diagram for this if I need it. Fortunately, it doesn't look like I will need it, uh, although it looks like it needs to be tightened up. Although, when the thing I'm going to do first just make sure that moves freely, and then we'll deal with that. Um, this one is a 5-tube radio. And I took a quick look under here when I was buying it. And the uh, condition of it is not all that bad. Um, got a selenium rectifier. And I'm not sure what somebody was doing. Maybe they're getting ready to um, restore it, restore, restore this radio. But um, the um, other than the fact that the speaker is trashed and the tubes are missing, um, it doesn't look like much has been done to it. Now, I do see a burn mark on that capacitor, which leads me to believe somebody, somebody's been here. Although I suppose it's possible somebody that at the factory 
Um, so one of the things I want to do is um, turn the light. Let's see here. So I want to check a few things out first. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is see if the um, the electrolyte capacitor uh, is shorted or not. Of course, I also have to put a new cord on here. Um, I don't know what I've got. I've, I know I've got one I can put in here temporarily. Let's see here. We'll put that on 2K. And this one also has a share a, a floating ground. This is not grounded to the chassis. 500. So this one, it's like 500 K, okay, is it? 50. Yeah. That's 500 K ohms. And that could very well be, yeah, actually I see a resistor going from there to ground. But I don't see a dead short there. And if this is wired similarly to the one I just got done with, let's see. Actually, no. This has got this, okay. <clears throat> this one actually, oh, okay. Um, this radio must be a little bit newer than the uh, Zenith I just got done working on. <clears throat> so I was looking for a rectifier too, uh, initially. Um, of course, there isn't one because we've got this selenium rectifier. But what I didn't notice, and this is technically a 5-tube radio, but if, if uh, it weren't for the, the uh, selenium rectifier, this would be considered a 6-tube uh, radio. And this, is ha this has the extra RF amp tube in it, which also means that this should be a decent performer. Uh, we'll see how this compares to the Zenith I just got done with. This is a smaller, more compact radio, and this also has the newer miniature tube style tubes. Um, and again, because we have a, a half wave rectifier in here, they've got um, one, two, three filter capacitors, plus you've got, I assume this is the bypass capacitor, the 80 microfarad 25 volt. Um, of course, I'm also betting that the uh, the filaments are run off from the, the B plus, and it looks like they are, just like the other one. So very similar idea, basic uh, same basic idea. Uh, it's packaged a little different. We got a suitcase. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is let's see. So I just checked the electrolytic capacitor, and let's see, we've got you going somewhere. All right, that goes to that switch. Okay, fun. And then where's the other wire go to? Um, all right. Do, do, do. There's that. And then, oh, okay, so that goes over to there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I don't think I have, um, oh, ew, oh, joy, okay, well, I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do about that. What they've done is, um, the cord comes in here, and you've got this piece of cardboard here. And the cord goes in, goes over between these two layers of cardboard, and then comes out here. Uh, which means that this 
doesn't come out easily. I'm just going to clip it off before and after and we'll feel, figure out what to do with it later. That's something new I have not seen before. That's all right. We'll, we'll, uh, I'll probably have to drill one of the rivets out so I can run the power cord where I want it to go. And then let's see here. So we've got you going over there and you've got to go over there. Okay. why they did that, but hey, that's how they did it. And 0.05. Okay, so this this capacitor is, uh, it goes between one leg of the power cord to the common ground. So that's got to go. So we're going to just nip you right off from there for now. I don't want you there. Let's see. I don't know if I have. I know I've got a cord floating around somewhere I can use temporarily. I'm being a little bit anal with this because of the um, overall condition, although um, well that resistor's still okay. Some of these sand resistors, they get corrosion here. And the corrosion actually gets inside the resistor and breaks the connection. But this one is reading only slightly high. 160 ohms instead of 150. That's fine. The thing is, I'm going to have to <coughs> probably change out this resistor and go with a higher value since um, I'm going to be replacing that guy with something more modern. There are times when I wish I were really ambidextrous. I've managed to figure. I've, already, I've managed to learn how to use a left hand for th some things because when you're working on electronics, especially this older stuff, being able to use your left hand is very useful. Come on, come on. There we go. All right, so we need a power cord. Let's see what I have. Okay, so I've got a temporary power cord on here. Um, now I get to put all the tubes in here. So I put them in in the right order. Putting them in the wrong order would be bad. Because one of the tubes is a 2.5 volt. Alright, and so I start out here at this end with a 1U4, I believe, yes. And that's what you are. Hmm. Okay, and what are you? 1R5, which would be the next one. Next, we need another one of your four. Aha, three B four is not what I want. And don't want that either. I want this one. Huh. Well, I've not seen this brand before. Reliable Selectron Tubes. Well, let's hope you're reliable. <clears throat> I have tested all these tubes. The person who sold them to me said that they had tested before selling them. And I tested them also, and apparently they were telling me the truth because they all passed. And they were all pretty decent, actually. And they were priced pretty well, That's, um, which made me happy. Okay. Some of these looks like these look like these were poles. Okay. Now, one of the things that I expect to find is that um, if if the uh, radio is not shorted, 
Um, none of these tubes will light. All right, so this is the 40 watt equivalent. This is the 75 watt equivalent, and that's the 100 watt equivalent. And right now I've got it set to the 40 watt bulb because these radios don't draw a lot of current. I don't know if it tells me how much they draw, but they don't draw much. Being battery operated sets and the uh, low voltage filaments, they really don't draw that much current, uh, which I just said. I guess I'm redundant. Okay, on. Turn you on. Bring this up so that, that that will. Oh, one last thing I have to do. Get it out of here. If I want to hear, I kind of need a speaker. And I happen to have an old speaker. To replace that poor mangled thing that, that I took out. Actually, this is not the speaker I want to use down the road, but we shall see. Okay, I think I've got it now. And I don't need this anymore, I don't think. So I need it up here. Alright, so this is on. volume. Let's see what we have here. And so that's telling me I've got 50 volts. Nothing happening there. Um, and these battery powered sets also don't like low voltage um, very much. If you try to run them down below a certain voltage you aren't going to get much. 73 and 80. Seems like I should have something there. I don't. Well, let's bring it up for more, a little bit more. 89 volts, 90 volts, that should give me some sound. If it doesn't, I know I've got a problem. No static, no nothing. Dead. Hmm. Okay. Um. And that's correct, and that looks like that's secure. All right. Um, the other problem with dealing with these tubes is it's really hard to see the filaments on them. Like in the last radio, I don't think, of course, they were different. They were the older style, larger tubes. Um, I don't see. So, let's get this around. And does this give me voltages? It would be really nice if it did. Um, I don't see any voltages on this. Oh, yeah, okay, no. All right, well. This is a half-wave rectifier, <coughs> which should mean on this side of the resistor, um, 60 volts or so, maybe? Well, let's find out. be nice to learn that, wouldn't it? Okay, let's put this there, and let's see. Do we want to know? Um, that is off, okay. So I'm going to go over here to, um, common ground, ground 
this. So I have 69 volts. Okay, so that means that everything's working from the on-off switch forward. Not you, not you. Nothing. Huh. Um, well, uh, let's see. Let's see if I can get this, this up a little bit more. So this is telling me I've got 98 volts. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass the bulbs. Ooh. I do hear humming. Okay. Remember I said that uh, these little radios don't like low voltage? They really don't like low voltage. Yeah, I bet that hum is telling me that uh, the electrolytic is shot, which that's uh, not a real surprise. Okay. Well, if there was a problem, I fix it. If there wasn't, I spent a lot of time looking for something that didn't exist. Um, um, but oh, there you are. I'll put you back in here. Stay out of trouble. Stay out of trouble. There we go. Okay. Now, let's do this. Oh. Nice home. Well, I've got something going on. I've got a complete... I've got a complete uh, fil a filament chain. We're getting hum. And uh, my audio amp portion is working. Again, because I'm getting hum. But... Um, I found out what's wrong with this. There's a little rubber belt there's a shaft, I don't know if it's a wood or plastic, but there's a little shaft with a hub on it. I think it's plastic, and wrapped around the shaft is a piece of rubber. And the rubber has aged, and the, um, the rubber is more like plastic, so it's not doing too much. Well, let's see, we want... Ah, there we go. I have some... I have radio... Band of radio sounds. Well, um, it's acting like a radio somewhat. Um, so here's what I want to do. I don't want to fool around with it much more without at least replacing the bypass or the uh, grid capacitor on the output. Because um, that'd be a really good way to destroy one of the tubes that I just bought. Uh, and that would make me very unhappy. Um, that would really not be a good thing, in my mind. This is 22. We have them. Oh, this is good. Of course, the next problem I'm going to face is... Uh, how am I going to get them all to fit in there? 
Um, well, the last time I did this, I took, yeah, last time I did this, I took a terminal strip, <coughs> straighten the leg out, where are my terminal strips? Terminal strip, there it is. Took a terminal strip, straighten this leg out straight and soldered it to the common ground on the old electrolytic and then that gave me the ability to um, attach the new capacitors and the new wiring to this so I think that's what I try to do it again um, but I've got to pay attention to um, what goes where? I think what I'm going to do uh, is take a picture of this. Um, one of the things I've discovered, and this is something that you might want to bear in mind, is that while it's nice to have a circuit diagram, you can't rely on it 100%. Um, and the reason you can't is because they create a circuit diagram, they build the set, then they make revisions of the set, and those revisions don't necessarily wind up in a circuit diagram you have access to. I've run into that uh, a number of times. And in fact, I have a Silvertone console that um, I got the circuit diagram for it, and I was trying to uh, make the circuit diagram line up with what I was seeing in the radio, and it just wasn't happening. What I finally wound up doing, because the console did have a fairly good size circuit diagram in the case, unfortunately it had yellowed so badly I couldn't take the, the picture I took of it and actually print it and have it be readable. So I wound up copying it to my computer and reading the circuit diagram off the monitor as I worked on the radio. Uh, at least that gave me, at least I had that option, but um, it, uh, is this going to work? I'm just looking at this and wondering, I might have room, uh, maybe. Um, maybe. It might work. Yeah, I think it might. All right, so let's see. I've got to have, I've got to have. All right, so I've got one, two, Three, probably four, four terminal strip connections here. So I've got four here. One, two, three, four. Yes, that of course makes sense. So the original had four connections. I have four connections. I can use this for the common for anything that uh, um, I have displaced by putting this on the common it was using. Um, yeah, that might work. Let's try it and see. First, like I said, I'm going to make pictures. So I really, really, really don't want to get into this. Snip wires and find out that, oh, I don't know where certain wires go. And I would like to believe that the, that this portion of the circuit is, is as written. But I can't rely on that, so... Alright, and the other thing I've also learned is that you uh, have to take pictures from several different angles. Okay, I want to uh, show a little bit of what, I've, what I'm trying to do on this. And um, so on, the, on my last radio, I didn't record what I'm doing. So here I've bended my... I've bended, I bent my uh, center plate. This is a common... There's four of these guys on this electrolytic, all tied together. They're all part of the case, and they act as the uh, conne the connection point for the common return, or otherwise known as B minus. So what I'm going to do is this is going to mount in here, and um, you'll also notice I've chopped these all off. My uh, obviously my goal is to make sure that these 
never make connection with any part of this circuit because that would be bad. Uh, we don't want that. Um, this capacitor is not healthy. We already know that. We don't want an unhealthy capacitor, one that but could potentially short, being having any part of this circuitry. So we're we're going this route. So I'll be back at some point once I get this get this all wired in and hopefully successfully get everything set up properly. It's going to be very interesting because uh, because these these tabs. Um, have, have, are, are fairly good size. This is a tab hiding under here. They're fairly good size, and they've got. In this case, you've got these three wires, and you've got the actual capacitor. Um, so I'm gonna have fun getting uh, everything hooked to that one connection spot. But I think I can because I've got these holes down here, and I can use those holes up there or together. Um, so we should be able to get it done. Uh, so I'll be back uh, when this is finished, and also I'm going to make sure to, to uh, remove, which I think this is already done, the coupling cap for the uh, output tube. Because um, that, yeah, maybe I'm being a bit nervous about that. I know some people will play a radio longer than I feel comfortable doing it um, without changing this coupling cap, but... Um, I don't really want to wreck my tubes, so I change that kind of stuff early on. And then I go from there and um, check things out and start replacing stuff. And I check voltages and try to get a, a sense of how the radio is doing. And it's sometimes interesting because then um, I discover how much better things are voltage-wise and otherwise uh, as a result of the work that I'm doing. So I shall be back. Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, doing this live, this was quite a challenge. Um, I, I, I don't know how much time I would have put on the, uh, the video had I filmed it as I was doing it. It was frustrating because um, everything is so tight, getting everything to fit just where you wanted. Some of the other challenges are, you know, this schematic doesn't entirely match this radio, which is not uncommon, unfortunately, in finding out. So I took extra steps uh, when I was doing this. I actually made it some, a diagram, which you probably can't see. There. I made a diagram um, for the wiring in that area around the... Uh, that I was going to be rebuilding. And um, so it was because I just want, I wanted to make sure that it is, um, I make enough, let's put it this way, I make enough mistakes without uh, um, relying on an untrustworthy schematic and not having something to back me up. Uh, one of the other things I tend to do is take pictures of the area before I touch it. Um, so that I can uh, have something to refer back to. Uh, this schematic made me a bit nervous because it seems to be even less reliable than than the usual schematic is. So I took extra steps, and I think I've got it. I haven't turned it on yet. I'm about to do that in a minute. A couple of things I do want to mention. Um, when I was soldering, this the center tab goes down to the uh, the ground lead on the uh, electrolytic on the electrolytic. Uh, the old electrolytic capacitor. And I used my regular soldering iron and I didn't crank the heat up on that. Um, and when I got done soldering in, this into place, um, I actually moved this and looked to see if there was any hint that the solder job was, uh, the solder was not as solid and as secure as I wanted it to be. And on this side I did see a spot where the solder looked like it really hadn't bonded to the strip. So I dug out my big, my bigger soldering iron, um, this thing, uh, which is looking huge in the camera, and uh, I heated it really good, made sure that the solder was flowing well, and then I checked it again after I got all done. Because um, obviously this is a critical connection, this is um, the uh, B- minus for the whole radio, and 
you really don't want this floating around in your in your radio anyway because you know you've got hot stuff here and that would do bad things so if you're doing something like this make sure you've got a good solder joint um, because if you don't you won't be happy um, so I have not turned this on yet I've just hooked up the speaker the external speaker as you saw the speaker I, um, that I had for this and it wasn't very healthy so I'm going to turn this on I'm going to watch the voltage I don't have I don't have any um, volts on this uh, schematic is another thing I'm not happy about but I don't have a choice um, so I'm guessing this is probably based on the previous radio I worked on I'm guessing this should be somewhere around 100 volts but let's see oh there it is okay so we have hum this is good I'm going to back out a little bit here so right now I've got 85 volts. I'm going to go a little bit higher. Again, that light is not lighting, which I'm not surprised at anymore. Okay. Let's see. Nothing. Um, let's see. Uh, so clearly the app is working. Um, oh, I need to show you something. Um, Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to boost this voltage up a little bit more. Oh, there it is. We have radio sounds. And that didn't start happening until I got above 90 volts. Um, I'm at 96 right now. Let's see here. Do we have... Nothing. Let's see. Well, bring the ball. It votes up, votes up to. Okay. Okay, that was actually a little bit higher than I wanted it to be. Well, let me see here. Uh, let's. Let's go there and see what we got. Oh, turned everything off. Aha. Okay, so what I did was I had a bulb, my bulb in circuit. Um, and this takes so little current, it wasn't getting enough volts to really function. And right now we're at 108 volts. So let's see. Do we have... Nothing. Where is it? Hmm. Well, it's trying to sound like a radio, but it's not doing much. 
and it's tuning kind of, but it's not doing anything. So I'm going to have to dig into that a little bit more. Um, the noise that um, you were hearing was the, my, my light over here. I keep forgetting about that. So this looks okay. Um, I might do some signal tracing or, or use a signal generator to try to see if I can pick up uh, anything. Oh, before I do that, um, let me just turn this off. Okay. There is something else I want to show you. Um, and when I spotted this, it, it kind of shook me up. Um, let me see if I can zoom in closer. Um, and once again, too far. Doesn't like that. Hello. Thank you. Alright. This capacitor, and I don't know. Can I get in there better? Okay. Alright. Uh, at some point, this capacitor got mashed down so that the, its wire was actually resting on the wire below. And that wire goes from the um, tube above and the IF can below. And it... Uh, it was a dead short, and so I went into full panic mode, um, and I want to show you why I, I panicked. So let's look at the uh, at the schematic here, and um, the one R5 tube is the tube that's um, that we're dealing with. Uh, there's the plate in number two, and then the the uh, of course this goes down through the IF can to the B plus. This little symbol means B minus. This capacitor is the, the uh, capacitor that uh, was shorted across that wire. Uh, and it was this part of the capacitor, this wire that went from the capacitor to B minus, that was directly across this wire. So when I saw that, I immediately went into full panic mode. Um, got 95 volts on this pin. And um, these are small, very thin, very delicate wires. It's also old. Uh, it wouldn't take an awful lot to harm one of these coils. Um, you could either destroy... Uh, some of these wires are probably a little bit corroded, so they're a little thinner than they might normally be. So that that spot could burn away, or the coil itself could fry. And I, I don't know how much current really flows through the circuit, but it's never a good thing when you take 95 volts and, and short it to ground. So, I was, like I said, I was in full panic mode, and so I immediately checked. I actually, because I was panicking, I checked these coils, these coils, these coils. <laughs> I was really, really afraid that something had gotten cooked. So, based on what I, what, I, what I can see now, looking at it more carefully, I can see where the problem area would have been if there was one. Um, I'm pretty confident that the radio was not harmed. If this coil had fried, and I was really worried that it had, the chances of me finding a replacement for this are like slim and none. It looks like I won't have to replace it in the IF can. This radio will still work once I find out what's wrong with it. And that'll be the, my next step to find out why it's not tuning stations. Uh, so we will proceed from here. What I think I'm going to do is, I think I'm probably going to do a signal trace on this and see if I can find out where it stops making it. It seems like part of the IF is working. You can hear the radio sounding like it was working. And I guess the other thing I could try is I could put a radio right near this and tune to see if the oscillator is working. Um, I haven't done that yet. Well, this is the first time I've fired it up since I did all this work. So I think that's probably the next thing. I might check to make sure the oscillator is working by using another radio. Um, and then um, if it sounds like that's working, then we'll go check and make sure that signal is getting through uh, through here and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, well, we're going to wrap up part one here. Um, unfortunately, we haven't figured out yet why the radio isn't tuning the radio stations. Uh, I'll be working on the tuning mechanism because it's not doing much. Um, I'm hoping that uh, I also have a repaired speaker to show you. 
Um, we'll actually go into a little bit um, regarding the repair of the speaker. So if you can join me, that would be great. I uh, look forward to having you uh, join me on the next video. Um, see you next time.